day, what a day, what a day. Uh, I have dreamt of this moment since I was a kid. And, but honestly, nothing could prepare you for uh, the view of Earth from space. It wasn't all that long ago. Sir Richard Branson, virgin music mogul, billionaire entrepreneur, was kind of literally on top of the world. Less than a year ago, he became the first space company founder to blast off on his own ship into outer space. Three, two, one, release, release, release. Fire, fire. I don't know of anyone on Earth with the wild vision, the confidence where so many people don't have it. Ladies and gentlemen, this here is Sir Richard Branson, astronaut. <laughs> But the space race can be a brutal one. The highs, we understand, but the lows, boy, the cost of failure on a space launch is extraordinary. And Branson knows that firsthand. His space cargo company, Virgin Orbit, once upon a time valued at more than $3 billion, has just disintegrated. Virgin Orbit filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy on Tuesday. So how did this happen? How did such a novel space startup, helmed by the man who just seemed to have no limits, just crash and burn so spectacularly? Well, first, let's just put this out in the open. The space race is relentlessly competitive. I mean, anytime you have three of the richest, craziest, most ambitious people on the planet trying to outdo each other in an industry that is Honestly, as uncharted as it is dangerous, you're gonna have fireworks. And let me just make that clear. When you are hurtling people up into the sky at several kilometers per second, it's no joke. Failures are catastrophic. These are the spectators that we're watching. Many of them probably had their view blocked just as we did with the television cameras with just a huge fireball and a huge cloud of smoke. They may not realize yet what has happened. A space company's failure rate has to be almost zero. And 1% is not close to zero. We're talking like 0.0001%, all the zeros. So back to the present. When Virgin Orbit launched a rocket carrying nine satellites, this was back in January of this year, and it crashed into the Atlantic Ocean, it was almost impossible for investors to chalk that up as a lesson learned. This was a really big moment for the UK space industry. In the UK, they're great makers of satellites, but not launched. What we know is that when that happened at stage two, there was some sort of malfunction. And the ultimately, the payload, which is satellites for small sat makers and operators, were not deployed. Now, Virgin Orbit does things a little differently than we're used to seeing. Now, usually, we think of space launches as being vertical, right? But Virgin straps its rockets to the underbellies of modified Boeing 747s. And I, and I realize this isn't a Boeing 747 and they don't usually come in yellow, but, but just work with me here. So these are air launches. And this flight started out you know, just fine. The rocket released at 35,000 feet with like 75,000 people watching on a live stream. But there was, quote, an anomaly. The rocket couldn't get high enough and it failed to reach orbit. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, it appears that Launcher One has suffered an anomaly, which will prevent us from making orbit for this mission. Now, fortunately, no one was hurt. The satellites were destroyed, though, and faith in the company's long-term ability to launch payloads crumbled. It scrambled to find new funding. It halted operations, even laid off almost all of its staff. Of its 750 or so employees, only about 100 remain. But this isn't the only Branson-backed space odyssey that is struggling. Virgin Galactic down 64% since its public debut. At its highs, the stock traded as high as $57 a share, currently sitting at four. That's right. So set aside the fact that Virgin Orbit, which focuses solely on launching cargo, like satellites, into space, has lost almost 99% of its stock value in the last year or so. 
the space tourism company it spun off from, the much more well-known Virgin Galactic, it's also fallen on hard times. And when you see the most recent rocket failure, not just as an isolated event, we start to get a broader picture of just how this company has been shaped and held back by tragedy. We're learning a lot more tonight about the moments just before and after the explosion of that Virgin Galactic rocket plane four days ago over the California desert. In 2014, a Virgin test flight would go horribly wrong. Now, it started out like most others. The rocket separated from the plane, as it should have, and the engine fired. But 11 seconds later, the rocket shredded apart in midair. Of the two pilots inside, one died. The other survived, but just barely. And the debris field, 50 kilometers long. The National Transportation Safety Board investigated and found the problem to be human error. And according to investigators, backup systems were lacking, as if Virgin simply believed that its highly trained test pilots were simply incapable of making a wrong move. There was just no room for human error. And broadly, this raises one of the most fascinating differences between Virgin and its competition. From an article in the New York Times, SpaceX and Blue Origin were run by algorithmic geniuses who saw the potential for computing power to eliminate human error. Virgin Galactic was more analog, befitting Mr. Branson's persona as an adventurer of yesteryear. The ship took real skill to fly. Every flight was a matter of life and death. And making things worse, several years before that crash, there was another accident at Virgin, a ground test gone wrong of a rocket engine for the same vehicle that would crash seven years later, again with deadly consequences. Three people killed, three people injured. So fast forward to 2023, Virgin Orbit is now looking for a buyer. According to its bankruptcy filing, it listed assets at around $243 million US with a total debt of about $153 million as of last September. Bottom line, space is hard and the lows are just as spectacular as the highs.